This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Live from the Sorgatron Media Studio here in Beachview, neighborhood of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, it is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here, and uh, it's it's the awesome cast. It's time to get geeky, get awesome, right here. And myself, a video producer, content producer. Sometimes I dig in the webs and the internets and the social medias uh, here in Pittsburgh, PA. With me, first of all, so coming from Studio C, high atop. Whoop, oh, sorry, iCloud needs an update. <laughs> iCloud needs an update. When did that happen? <laughs> iCloud needs an update. There he is. John Chichilla is hiding behind the iCloud. Hi at top. It was not my iCloud. It must have been your iCloud. It was my iCloud. I had to make I had all the cancels. I changed my password recently. I think I had a security scare on the uh on the on the uh Apple side. So uh, uh this computer didn't get updated over here. Uh but Chilla, how you doing? He's a he's a gadget guru over at Big Bank International Esquire. I'm doing pretty well, and there's not a cloud in the sky right now. It's, it's a beautiful, sunny no. Tuesday evening. No, they're just all popped up they're in front of your face. <laughs> <laughs> awesome! And you heard that voice there. He is uh, John Carmen. Yo, yeah. So one of the, one of the old school podcasters. Yeah, one of the originals. The OGs. Mm-hmm. That's right. With the with the G spot. The OG with the G spot. The OG spot. The OG spot. That's what. That's what. You're, that's what. If you ever reboot the podcast, it should just be the OG spot. You know, my father asked me recently if uh, we had the episodes online. Yeah. Uh, he could not even listen to it before. I don't know why. All of a sudden, he's he's like, I've been trying to find you guys. And hey, so, times, <laughs> times change. I'm a, I don't know about rebooting, but I'm definitely going to put them the old episodes up. I think it's worthwhile. Yeah. It's part of history, man. It's just like uh, an overnight FTP. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that's easy. That's yeah. easy. You didn't have that what many audio, episodes, what, did you? Are, are, are they at least in like MP3 format or what format? No, they're, they're in MP3. Like, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Are you they're one of those? Like, they're you're, you're, you're they're on tape. Yeah, we're yeah, on real. <laughs> <laughs> There's actually a really... I, 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 let's talk a little bit more about our friend um, uh, with the Thrifty Podcast was telling me about there's a guy that, that takes cassette tapes. They find the cassette tapes... Uh, at, at the thrift shops and they're digitizing the cassette tape so you still uh, get music or music yeah and you so you're getting that cassette tape <laughs> that low sound. quality yeah yeah exactly <laughs> like, like this is becoming a thing like they're they're coming back around now okay i don't know <laughs> i mean you can download donna summer mp3s like what uh, i don't it's, get it's it. all about it's get... one of those throwbacks i mean like how people like vinyl right mm-hmm. and then you want to digitize the vinyl you get the vinyl sound in, in digital form you know things like that i it's something i need to ask more questions about obviously yeah but but this is the thing that i just want to put that in your head i feel this... like i don't have i don't know if i would be able to tell the difference i don't know if my uh my audio tuning is that precise that I would really no, appreciate. I, definitely, I, definitely I feel would. like it might be an emperor's new clothes type of thing. <laughs> you think so? Yeah. <laughs> like it, it really just sounds crappy, but we think it sounds more authentic. Okay. Yeah. It, it, it's maybe it's the sound you grew up on, right? That the can mushy, be. mushy sound. Mushy. Anyways, sound. this is the awesome cast where we uh, get awesome, get geeky, talk tech, social media, and more with local nerds that use it, like I my, like the Johns today. It's a good thing Thudders isn't here because it, it, we're just she here with the Johns. She gets confused, yeah. Yes, and she gets you confused. <laughs> She's, of course, on assignment tonight with the Penguins. Uh, but, of course, you can check out everything at awesomecast.com. Email us at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com uh, at Twitter. Uh, I'm sorry, at, <laughs> on Twitter at awesomecast and the awesomecast Facebook page. You can uh, subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Google Music Podcast, as well as a video version on the YouTube and Facebook page. And, uh, of course, you can and, and, and keep an eye out the Sorgatron Media Twitch page. We've been playing with it a little more. We've been rebroadcasting the shows on there, too. Uh, so it's another place that you can get it on demand if you're a Twitch person. Um, I am now. You, you are now? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, because I, I, I didn't got, know oh. what it was. <laughs> because we until, brought you until in. Until we were on it. Yes. Well, I had I had apparently been on it. Yes. Didn't know. Yeah. You were you were playing Fortnite with us while I was doing a game night here with uh, pro, local pro wrestler Brohemoth. Brohemoth, and and as if the Fortnite app on the iPhone isn't glitchy enough, it like froze, mm-hmm. and I and I had to walk into a building like eight times. I don't yeah, I don't know yeah. what you were doing or what it looked we, to you like I just, was doing. It just looked like you were kind of hanging out like in the corner. I was just standing. Oh, it's like corner. well, he's there, yeah. and we're like, hey I was man, like, I was Blair Witched in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> It was! Oh, it was Fortnite Blur Witch. Uh, but we, we're having a lot of fun with that, of course. A lot of game stuff on there, and we're bringing the shows over now. Uh, of course, a lot of people are using Twitch to get their streaming media, and we can uh, do a little more of an on-demand kind of situation over there. Uh, we've been doing a lot of fun with it uh, over with all the wrestling content over at IndieWrestling.us for a Twitch channel. So we're bringing what we're learning there and applying it to shows like this. So please subscribe, follow the Sorgatron Media Twitch channel uh, for a lot of things going on here uh, from the Sorgatron Media Network. And also, uh, let's say live streaming here every Tuesday. You can interact with us at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on the Facebook Live and uh, where we broadcast with our friends RiversEdgePGH.com Saturdays at 9 a.m. And I join him uh, once a month, usually the every third Sunday of the month. Probably a little different here for May uh, for a River Talk for the awesome thing of the month. And also shout out to our friends at the405media.com that carry us weekdays at 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon Eastern. You'll get the latest episode uh, to catch up on. And if you want to be part of our studio audience, please hit us up, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com, and we'll save you a seat. We do encourage a live studio audience, and especially very soon, because we did learn on June 5th is our 400th episode, and I believe our eight-year anniversary. Uh, so uh, we're starting to make some plans for that other than it's something's going to happen. So uh, mark the calendar. I, I just posted on the Twitter today that that first episode we did with Uncle Crappy. Uh, so really episode one was with Uncle yeah, Crappy. Well, cool. you were like episode two or three, weren't you? Something like that. You were, you were oh, early. You, wow, were very, yeah. you were very early. Okay, on this show. I remember this now. And I'm working out. I did some other um, with Rob. There might be some other lucky timing uh going on as well and I'm, I'm putting i'm putting a word in to see if somebody else might be in the area too so uh I, well, maybe we'll get some old faces on here and just uh get together maybe not not as crazy as that christmas episode when i had like 15 people on at the same time is it a, is it a fox news person <laughs> is it a fox news person is it uh no okay no if we, if we have that but many I, people on you have to do it in like a 360 degree view where people can we can do that can pan around the room we can definitely do that we, we were doing that experimenting with that a little bit and i'll have to bring that back again let's get andy to do a drone shot yeah i don't know if we're illegally allowed to do it with all these wires for the tea and everything out here i mean that can be a little a little hectic out there but well, uh, we'll meant, find out i do want I a sweet indoor, drone shot of beachview indoor, indoor drone. drones i don't think that's a good idea either just you wouldn't want to see the roof. that one time and it went real horribly horribly wrong it pro- but andy's a <laughs> licensed pilot okay indoors We'll find out. We'll find out. Either way, uh, also, thanks to our Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash awesomecast. You guys are uh, part of the reason we're keeping the lights on here in the studio. At the Coffee Club $5 level, uh, Matt Weller, uh, Matt underscore Weller on the Twitter. Uh, he's going to be getting a fun discussion where we talk about um, um, John Carmen's Fortnite addiction and uh, relationship <laughs> problems related to his Fortnite issues. <laughs> New season just came out. Uh, but anyways, he'll get that. And you guys can too at the $5 coffee club level. And uh, of course, at the fan of the show dollar level, I think he's, I think he's the longest, our longest Patreoner, uh, Mike, Mike, Michael Fedor, uh, Mike Fedor show on the tour. Thank you so much, you guys for supporting the show. And you guys do can too. If you dig the show, even just a dollar a month, you won't miss it. You probably won't miss it. Uh, in that little bit, I mean, everybody that listens, if you guys give a dollar, we'll be doing very well and, and, and can expand the show uh, even further. So uh, thanks so much to everybody that does that. And we got some other uh, uh, goodies for uh, people as we get into those higher levels. Let's get into our awesome thing of the week. I want to go first. I, 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 need to set the, I need to set the pace. I mentioned our friends at the Thrifty Podcast that just joined the network. It's a thrift shop podcast or sh- a thrifting podcast, right? Well, I went out with them um, and, and, and we recorded a, a Greatest Finds episode here in the studio. And, uh, and I got to be a part of that. And, and I came away with a $14 
giant box of things. It was amazing. I told you I, I got a because they charged by the pound. You said by the pound. So there's a there's a big box of stuff. I have a sealed copy of Glee uh, CD ROM board game. Why not? <laughs> um, I, I I have. I bet that stays sealed for a while. Maybe, maybe. Do I've you been... even have a CD ROM? Um, technically, some of these uh, computer towers do. Hey, right. this, actually, the studio computer does. I don't think I've ever opened it. Uh, <laughs> That's where you uh, put your coffee mug. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, uh, but there's a lot of fun stuff. I got like three Guitar Hero guitars, including like the nice Mustang Fender one that you can actually learn how to play guitar and rock band on. Um, and some DDR pads for the Wii, you know, things like that. Uh, there's actually a picture I posted um, uh, to, because my brother actually fixes Guitar Hero really? uh, guitars. Yeah, because he, he's... he's He's a huge gamer, has a lot of those things, and then he started having to fix them, and That's he learned awesome. how to do it. He's really good with that stuff. Um, and so I'm just like, hey, are you brushed up? I got some stuff in case it doesn't work. Yeah. Um, so so uh, t- just took those home yesterday, and I'm going to try to get those hooked up to some of my old hardware. But the coolest thing for this show is I got, guys, it's a, box. a 3D movie maker. So what is this thing? One, yeah, okay, the box Wait, is a little beat can up. Can I ask a question? Yes. Am I supposed to know what that is? What do you think this is? I mean, based on other this, than the description itself, that it's a 3D movie maker. Is this like a famous? I don't because I don't know what this is. the The company is what the hell is that company? <laughs> oh, it's sorry, from <laughs> WowStuff.com. Now I'm going to look up WowStuff.com. Uh, let's see. They don't exist anymore. Not surprised. Uh, oh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if they do or not. I was just in a, <laughs> home of innovative toys and gifts. New sparkly website in production and launching soon. Huh. That's interesting. There's actually nothing to go see there right now. Wait, what does this arrow do? Nothing. The, the logo looks like a QR code. No, no. That, that's the, this is the logo on the back. See that wow at the back? Like oh. it's a it's sci and science museum. It's science museum, just in a really bad. Um, font structure uh, so uh let's see how does it explain things pocket vr viewer smartphone 3d lens and full instructions for use includes science museum information sheet well i didn't even get into that stuff so the idea is oh oh, oh, oh yes 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 I'm sir raising my yes hand. sir yes sir what year uh what year is this i don't see a year on the box so what are the requirements to run the software um the like pentium 2 with <laughs> MMX <laughs> works with most fo- uh, smartphones. Android oh. version one uh, four point one or later. iPhone five or later. Running iOS eight or later. Uh, smartphone requires built-in gyroscopes, as Apple, Samsung, and others. Refer to manufacturer's product information for its specifications. No batteries required. Uh, yeah. So it's the idea is newer than I was hoping. Newer than yeah, exactly right. <laughs> Um, you get this this mirrored 3D lens, right? So the idea is you put this over, and I tried it with my iPhone 8, and it's got a little clip that attaches to it. Hold on. Like so. And it's going to be a very visual component here. So you have this, and you put it over your lens, and you're going to have to... Whoop, and it falls off. Hold it there? <laughs> I think I have the wrong size of phone and everything. Uh, no, no, no. You put you put it over, and it's going to stay well, most yeah, of the time. Well, yeah, phones are a lot smaller back then. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it said iPhone 5, and this is like an 8 Plus. So you line it up so it basically cuts the image in half, mm-hmm. right? Uh, ideally. Now, the problem I'm having is the lens is too big, and I see the, mir- the mirrors on the sides oh, of the yeah. shot. So whatever I take, I'm going to have to crop down that doesn't seem for right. this to work. But in the end, what you end up with is an image, and I took one here in the studio that I can bring up for you. And again, cropped it down a little bit. But you get an image that's, you know, if you've ever seen Google Cardboard Im- images, it's basically two images right next to each other. And the cardboard, like the lens is in there, you know, separates it. You, you kind of focus right. them together. And then you get a 3D image. So there's just an image of okay. the front of the studio I did from my desk. And, and, you know, there's a lot of stuff. Like there's cameras and monitors and desks in there. So there's a lot of depth to it, right? Now they give you, from here, you can take that image and anybody with a Google Cardboard, um, I imagine you could take the image and put it on, say, a Gear VR, anything VR. Do they have software? No, it's just an image. and it, Or it's a video that's taken in that way. And then it comes with this is basically oh. a fold-up Google Cardboard. 
That's then the she real can find. fit in your pocket. Now this is the fun part. Like if, if that part didn't work, mm -hmm. this is a Google Cardboard you can fit in your pocket. Pull it out. It fits. It fits any phone because it just clips into the side, the back of this, and now you have a Google Cardboard viewer. Wow. And then you take this image, which I already have queued up here, and now it is a nice 3D image. Actually, I'm going to hand this to you so you can kind of give it a little bit of impression. I think I have that right. lined up correctly. Go and just, just push that out. Um, and, and I can, maybe I can upload the image for you guys to, you know, if you have a Google Cardboard or something. Um, so just look through there. You can see that image. That actually does work. And it looks 3D, right? Yeah. That's cool. So it completely works. Now, again, I got this at the thrift store, the outlet, where they just bring everything out in bins and you, you, you know, pay by the pound. It's the one where there's tables. Yeah, just tables yeah, just of, big bins. And nothing's organized, right? No, nothing's okay. organized. You just, you just dig through them. Wear gloves. My God, wear gloves. Oh, my God. Are there needles? I know, but it's not, it's not cleaned. Now <laughs> I'm there scared. Are, and there are clothes in there. Yeah, okay. Uh, old dirty band-aids. Yeah. Well, dirty band-aids, you know. <laughs> uh, but this was, let's see, there's a price tag on the back of this uh, at Marshall's um, for sixteen ninety nine. Uh, apparently, the original retail, according to this tag, was $24. It's yeah, not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. I don't know if I would have paid that for this. Um, but it's a 3D movie maker. You're probably not going to find one. I wouldn't imagine since the website doesn't even have it anymore. You're not going to get one new. <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> But this thing, but this thing was brand new. Like I think somebody got in there. Like I don't even know what to do with this. I was taking tape off of the plastic to oh. take it out of the box. Um, but what did you tear up the box like a bear? Like no, that... no, no, no. This is this is from it being in the bin and being, being thrown around. around yeah. Because the tossed guy... around in the bin. So um, greatest like technological thrift shop find ever. So I could take that. Technically, I could take that. And one thing I want to try to do with it is like maybe get, take a ringside at a wrestling show mm. this weekend and have somebody, you know, and the phone, my phone records at, you know, what crazy 4k or something, right? Cause it's a, it's an A plus. Right. So go out, record something, put it up on YouTube and say, Hey, use your Google cardboard for this thing. And now you're able to see part of the wrestling match in like this 3d, at least this depth. Yeah. Right. Um, so we're, we are now able to do thanks to this little thing. Cause this is how simple the process is a 3d video of sorts, you know, <laughs> in, uh, in comparison to like a VR, um, a, a VR 360 kind of situation. Right. This is the point. this is why I don't understand why all the phones with dual cameras can't take this kind of video natively. Oh yeah, like like the iPhone eight does. Yeah, like they, there are two lenses. Camera, the, like most of the Galaxy devices have dual cameras now. Mm -hmm. um, the ten has a dual camera. I mean, there, there's just so many devices out there with dual cameras. Wait, where, and, and based on what you're showing there, why are there two cameras? Just, one's a one's a uh, what's telephoto zoom. Oh wow! I never looked at that before. Yeah, um, but I mean the, the the device side should be able to figure out what's what and crop it correctly and yeah, you know zoom zoom out the 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 zoom the telephoto lens um, and kind of let you work with that. I'm just I'm just surprised it takes one of these types of devices that you have to clip onto the back of the phone to get that, that type of view. Oh, so that's why there's a one and a two when I take photos. Mm. I didn't know there were actually two lenses. I never looked at my phone. Well, yeah, and versus, again, this thing was built back for the iPhone 5. Right. But when this wasn't I'm a thing, too. worried about it it's compatibility just you're gonna have to, like, tape it on there if you're gonna use it at a wrestling show. Yeah, it, it seems like it. Um, you need to build, just, just go get a 3D printer and build a rig. Oh, is that all? <laughs> we need an alpha. Let's start an Alpha Lab gear company to take this 3D movie maker and make it compatible with modern cell phone technology. There is, uh, by the way, I just did a quick search, Chilla. There is kind of an iPhone. Um, there's kind of an iPhone uh, uh, solution for this as well. So I was looking for my phone for the chat room. And I realized it's still attached to the viewer. <laughs> um, there's kind of an iPhone uh, uh, thing here where it's uh, in the App Store preview. Um, so it's not like an official release. It's called Serio Video Recorder by Instinct Tools EE Lab. 
And uh, it, the, they do it by holding two iPhones together. <laughs> so that's one solution, Chilla. I was going to say, I didn't want to sound sarcastic, but yeah, you could just take two phones. Mm-hmm. You could. You could. So that's my fine. This is, wow, we spent so much time on just like the thing I paid like 50 cents for. It was a hey, lot of fun. Sometimes those though. are the best things. They are. They are. They are. It just surprisingly works, surprisingly simple, and, and you get such a cool effect from it, right? Hey, last week you had a $7 uh, iPad clip for the car. That's right. So That's right. Just And ours just came in today, actually. Uh, so we'll be putting that on. I don't know exactly what we're doing with that. I guess Missy's going to be using her iPad in the car for that. So we will we'll test that on a road trip very, very soon. Uh, so Chilla, what is... Actually, no, let's go with Carmen right now. Uh, let's go with Carmen. What is your awesome thing of the week? Probably should do the Facebook Tinder. Facebook dating. Facebook dating. <laughs> you saw that. I, I, I watched that a little bit of of the the fa conference so yeah it, it is facebook tinder isn't it's it it's pro- probably the most obvious advancement you know the obvious use of facebook for dating because who knows you better than facebook and facebook knows you better than you know yourself and actually there was a TechCrunch article that uh back in february that suggested this and they made uh, their own logo for it, and then they reused the logo for the actual announcement yeah. uh, in the article. And it's basically self-explanatory. It's dating on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Uh, a couple points, though. It's first name only. Um, that's that's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah, and I this would is, think. And, it, it was, and, it, and it's outside your friends. Like it will not... And it, it will not connect you to any of your friends, which... Could be, I mean, maybe that maybe you have a friend who's perfect. I think we've seen that in yeah. movies. Yeah. But um, I guess in movies or on Twitter. I guess the 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 cons probably outweigh the pros there, uh, because it, it could be, get a little awkward if it's hooking you up with your friends. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, what else? Oh, it it heavily relies on groups and events. Uh, it almost sounds like it only works with groups and events, although it's not clear. Like if you are interested in a particular group, uh, and then someone else that's a match for you is also interested in that group, uh, you can unlock that group and they'll introduce you or going, you, I, I imagine they'll start to have events specific for Facebook dating, but you can find out if some, if someone who is a match is going to a specific event, uh, you can unlock that mm-hmm. and it will match you. And I'm not sure if it works outside of those two things. If uh, you'll just get a notice, hey, so and so is a match, and you can just message each other. The messaging feature is separate from Facebook Messenger. Okay. So it won't get confused with you won't get it confused with your regular Facebook Messenger, and uh, nothing appears on your newsfeed. Hmm. So nothing's public. I don't even think the fact that you're using this app would be public. That would be the biggest concern, right? Is is something that you're doing here, like because we've had our we've set our privacies, and then that goes away, and what we thought was private with our friends ends up being you know seen by more than have we there, expected. Have there been any privacy issues with Facebook? They, I, that always seemed to be the case, and that's why I've never really dealt with like yeah. you know it's it's basically I don't trust the lockdown Facebook. So I'm not gonna even bother with it. And I think some people like to keep their dating life separate. From- yeah, yeah. Um, but in this case, but won't you bump in? Won't you bump into someone? Maybe. A, I mean, bump was a different app. Yes. <laughs> no, but I mean, like, won't you? Does it per, say I join the dating app and someone else that I know joins the dating app? Won't you see each other in no, the dating app? No, side? no. I think supposedly, it will hide you, hide you from your friends. Yeah, yeah. Supposedly, it it, it will not. It'll it will kind of exclude your friends it seems to be more of a one-on-one match suggestion as opposed to you know scrolling or swiping right or left i don't know i haven't been single in a long time so i don't i don't even know which way to swipe it feels like it was before the internet for me it it definitely was before anyone used the internet for 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 legitimate dating anyway yes yes (laughs) oh and speaking of which (laughs) we got a hand raise from the from the producer in the back what's up I do not want to try dating now. I want to make that clear. I am. Hey, when I see stuff like this and I hear the stories from people that deal with dating in this day and age, I am very happy to be locked down in a marriage. That works. <laughs> well, Zuckerberg did say this would be more for long-term relationships. And uh, I think he took a little uh, 
uh, shot at Tinder. Okay. Versus, because it's a versus, hook, it's versus a hook for up hookups, app. right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so this, the intention is more of like, a, I guess, a, like a Match. dot com type thing, uh, whose stocks dropped drastically when uh, mm. Facebook dating was announced. Um, also, since you guys are interested, it, it will not be limited to just people who have checked their uh, their their profile as single, their relationship status as single. It is open for uh, non monogamous relationships as well so you guys feel free to start dating on facebook (laughs) (laughs) okay all right or or, or i also wonder is this gonna start the same phenomenon where like i know people that say hey so and so and i aren't friends anymore can you open up your account so i can see what they're up to so so people are just gonna end up joining this getting someone else to join to see who else is on there kind of thing. I don't know. I, I don't trust it. I, I agree with Sorg, you know, might as well just have an open account because someone's going to, there's always, there's always going to be gonna ways around that. You, you know that. Well, you the know. danger now in unfriending someone is that now they're open to date you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, just, just keep them as a friend and unfollow because then you'll never have to be matched with that person. Then they're really in the friend zone. Yeah, they're now they're a friend of me, a friend of me with benefits. <laughs> All right, and and Sheila, you had something that was also from F eight today. Yeah, so I had the the new Oculus, and I apologize because I had a little computer malfunction. Mm-hmm. Um, I had the Oculus Go. That's what they're calling it. It's the standalone VR headset. Um, I was pretty impressed with the price, 199 bucks for the device. It does wow. have a two-year, it, it does have a two-year-old um, Snapdragon processor in there. Um, at the $199 level, you get 32 gigs of storage. For an additional 50 bucks, you get 64 gig. Um, seems like they have a lot of content signed up. Um, it's it's obviously a lot cheaper than the Rift. You don't have it. It is an all-in-one, so you don't have to plug it into a PC. Um, the Netflix is signed up. There's a number of other uh, what was it? Red Bull, Netflix, Showtime, number of TV type channels have have signed up with their apps. Um, and then there'll be some games. Uh, in some of the preliminary reviews I read, they said the controller was extremely comfortable and the device was light um, and easy to wear. Um, the the one reviewer I read said, you do only get about two hours of battery life playing games and doing whatnot, which to me was kind of short. And it's not easy to charge while you play because of, I guess, the location of the the charge port on the device. Okay. Um the, the, what I do like about this is it opens up this VR market to a much wider audience of people at the, that $200 price point. The, th- the one thing that did surprise me about this is there's no removable storage. Oh. Um, which kind of surprised me because I actually have a bunch of videos and whatnot loaded on. I put a lot of the Oculus content on my SD card. So. Yeah, I, it doesn't chew through my phone's memory. I, I just, I guess, I feel like thirty-two gig of storage for VR content is small. Yeah, it, but it, it it is nice. And again, we're, it, this is the lower end experience, right? So I think that's part of it too. Um, you know, versus it, it's one thing if you have a Samsung phone, you can pay the you know fifty to a hundred dollars, and you have a VR experience, right? And also, if you've had that, like you know, obviously, Chile, I have like the old SDK that you gave me and the older phone, which really just feels like it, it it overheats anytime I try to use it significantly these days, and the battery life is going away and everything like that. Um, so you know, going from that to you know that device to something like this that isn't, I have to buy a Samsung phone you know, outright because I'm not going to use a Samsung phone and this, you know, it, it, uh-huh. it, it is definitely more accessible there um, for anybody that's not in that ecosystem already. Uh, and also, I, I believe if I'm not mistaken, anything that I bought on a Gear VR should be compatible with this, right? That would be my guess. And then no one, they did not allude to that because it's 
I'm because guessing it's going to run the same type of Oculus it, it store. Seem, yeah, because it seems that it, it's kind of like when you buy something on iOS, it's on all of your iOS devices under your account. I have an Oculus account that I purchase things on, right? And that should carry over, I believe. So, um, because I imagine, you know, um, well, I keep talking and nobody explodes. If I got that title <laughs> right. Like, I imagine that version will also be the version I would use on a main Oculus if I had one. I think so. Hopefully, or else I'm going to be very sad about the games that I bought on all those sales. The one thing I'm interested to see is what they did for the display and how it compares, because the one thing they're u- they're not using an OLED display, they're using an LCD display in there. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm interested to see, and it's 1440p. Um, so I'm wondering what it looks like, because the one thing I still feel like, and it's it's probably nitpicky for a for a fifty dollar thing that I can plug my phone into. I, I feel like you get a little of that pixelization or pixel peep look where yeah. if you really if you really squint and focus at, at a specific area, you can kind of make out those pixels. But obviously, you're looking at your phone in a, under a magnifying glass. Um, I'm wondering if they were able to overcome that with this device or. Or how that how that all works out? Because if this had a better quality, um, it would be something I'm interested in. I just don't know how we're going. They're going to have these at Best Buy where I can walk up and put my put my eyes into it and see what it looks like. I don't I don't know. Mm-hmm. You'd want to bring like maybe some hand sanitizer and some gloves. Yeah, a lot of pink guy going around. Yep, yep. <laughs> just like the Goodwill. Um, <laughs> Anyways, um, something that is definitely more sanitary is our good friends at Slice on Broadway. I am not good with the segues today. Uh, our good friends supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with uh, Pepperoni Pizza uh, have, have been doing it for a good long time here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Chilla is, is, is not in the studio to partake, although your video feed is looking amazing today. Sorry you don't have pizza. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm I'm really bummed that I don't have pizza. And and uh, you know what? I wonder because I down I downgraded back to the I was using the 4K camera for something else, and I went back to the old 1080p. Oh man, it looks better. So I don't know if it's that or it's the lighting. I don't know. It could, it could I, be a little I, bit. I shifted everything. my overhead lighting. It is magic hour. It, it is. It is. And now all three of our cameras just are in all over the place. Uh, uh, what the way the light's catching it. But anyways, our good friend Slice on Broadway. Check them out, supporting us for a good long time here. Uh, the OG right here on Broadway, down the street from us. Uh, the original Slice on Broadway here in Beachview, Dover and Carnegie, PA, East End or East Liberty, if you're an old schooler here, and of course PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, who I understand are in season right now. Uh, because sports ball. Uh, thanks to them, the, uh, a best pizza and Pittsburgh runner and first placer in multiple publications. Thanks to them for supporting the show. Slice on Broadway.com, PJH underscore slice on the Twitter. Let them know the awesome cast sent you. So it and they is... have cheesecake from Juniors. Can I add my own oh, blood? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they, yeah. Yeah. So they do. Nice. Nice. We did have a real Italian. On with us, <laughs> real uh, like, wrestling man show. His name is Mabo Italiano, and we had him do uh, an ad, a uh, quick shout uh, to slice in Italian. Oh, all so, right. So, yep, yeah. yep. So, it, we had a lot of fun over on Mayhem Show with that. So, all right. Hey, guys, uh, you know, I've have something I've, I've, I've followed for a good while. Actually, since they, they first, you know, we did the welcome parties at Pot Camp yeah. Pittsburgh back in the day, back when they were in the South Side, and they've, they've moved around so much. Uh, there's a new cycle going on uh alpha lab gear cycle five actually uh so this is more like the actual gadgets and physical things um going on here uh so they're moving to the new cycle and of course if you guys are in the area there's an open coffee this friday may 5th is that right may 4th uh that Uh is this friday i think i think i think friday's the fourth actually but uh, either way, this Friday, because yeah, I don't, I know they don't do them on Saturdays. So there's a, a couple of cool things uh, coming through here, and it's, and it's cool because then you can go uh, chat with them and, and you know talk to people about what they're trying to make and everything. And there's a few um, pretty good ones. Uh, uh, Identified technology, a uh, drone operator uh, came out of that, and a, a few other pretty cool ones. I believe, I think isn't Velocity Robotics the one we were talking about a couple of weeks ago with uh, uh, Scott McTaggart? Uh, that that uh, won the hardware cup, um, the uh, auto set, which was uh, I believe the robotic power tools and accessories include speed, quality, and cost in construction. So that's the kind of things you're going to see 
uh, at this. So uh, go check it out. Uh, Alpha Lab, Alpha Lab, uh, org, I believe, is the website. I realize I'm on a Medium article now, so that's not... Oh, the Medium article, that has uh, the picture of Felix there, who was actually... Uh, he had another company in Alpha Lab Cycle 1. Not Alpha Lab Gear Cycle 1, but Alpha Lab Cycle 1 back... This would be 2008, wow. I believe. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Uh, they, they, a lot of cool companies that have come out of there. Some on the show that, and some, some that have been on the show and now are worth millions of dollars. <laughs> a few, yeah. a few of them actually. So it's good to see that still growing. Uh, Brandon, our friend from KC, um, actually lets us know that Double Dare is coming back to Nickelodeon. Did you grow up on Double Dare, there, John? Oh yeah, with Marky Mark. Oh, well, the wrong Mark. No, it, it, was, it was a different. Mark. It was a different Mark. Mark Summers. Yeah, it was Mark Summers. That's where the you got the. What did you? If you said what was it? If you, there was the whole you got slimed thing, wasn't it? I think that's like a lot it of. Was, that's yeah, one def- of the places Wait, where it was. I think I think there were a lot of shows on Nickelodeon where you yeah, got slimed. Was, you, you can't do that on television. Was one. Yeah, and I think that was the original. But this was one where you had to pick things out of a slimy nose. Remember mm-hmm. that? Yeah. yeah. It's good to see. It's good to see. Um. But no, it's going to be coming back. Uh, they are going to uh, do, 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 do. They're going to pay tribute to the show with a 30th anniversary sh- uh, special. Uh, it ran from '86 to '93 with a brief run in 2000, um, and, and uh, it was a, you know that's a that's a big throwback for us, and that's good to see that coming back. Supposedly, he does like these double dare. Somebody somebody was talking about like they knew him from some productions or something on a podcast I was listening to, and like. He, like they still do kind of like these bar double dare kind of shows. Oh, wait, he does, like, like Mark like, Summers will like show he, up to your bar and I, I think so. Like that's like, amazing. like, like he's, they're, they're doing the live component to it or something. So it'll be interesting to see that pop Well, up. I remember the game when mm-hmm. I was a kid. You can get the the home game. Oh, the home version. With yeah, your own I'm sure and, parents love that. Yeah. Um, Caltech researchers, according to uh, Amanda Narcissi, our friend from Bold Pittsburgh, uh, uh, they're developing an autonomous drone ambulance. This makes sense. What could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? Uh, let's see. Uh, from uh, California Institute of Technology, uh, it's a personal rescue system for autonomous drone ambulance intended to change the future of emergency response. This is actually to... amazing for certain situations. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, let's see. During the flight, the patient's vital signs would be monitored by the sensors inside the drone. The goal is to uh, airlift injured or trapped victims in hard-to-reach disaster zones. That can't be the full size. Uh, maybe this is an... Yeah, it seems kind of small, doesn't it? Just try to pick me up, drone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, But uh, something they're working on. They, they say that a full-size drone... This is a mini one. Yeah, okay. this, this, this says the, uh, the, the official drone will be the size of a small car and piloted by an artificial intelligence system. And the full-size drone ambulance system could be ready within five years. So there you go. Um, also, there's a uh, Brandon had this one too. There's a new Harry Potter Hogwarts mystery that I know has been advertised fully to me, despite not really being a huge Harry Potter fan. Is an app, of course. It hit the phones uh, back on April 25th. And uh, Chilla, you said that the, the people have not been terribly happy with this. Yeah, I read a couple of reviews where people people were not happy with this. And I want to say this is the one that it's kind of like a turn by turn. Mm-hmm. Like um, if you've ever played Star Wars Heroes. Um, to me, that's the so it's very- kind of like the, the gameplay. Like it's a it's like an RPG kind of thing. And it, and it's a free to play kind of situation, right? Yes. Yeah, that's where they get you. That's where it gets a little sketchy there. Uh, so I I don't know. It, it sounds like a lot of tapping. Uh, <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, Brandon also brings up the big news from this week. And this there was a video. The guy the guy from Sprint and that guy that always is uh, uh, not pulling punches from T-Mobile singing together. Uh, reaching an agreement to form a, a new company between Sprint and T-Mobile. Uh, T-Mobile couldn't get at it with AT&T. They got blocked in the uh, on the government side, I believe. So I guess uh, they're they're hitting it on this side, right? 
Why does it sound like we're talking about Facebook dating again? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my term, my phrasing is a little bit off on that one, but uh, I, I don't know. It, it's it's you know the the number three and four. Um, these are these are the two services that when everybody's out on the shoot with us and we say, hey, can you can you give me a text? And they're like, no, I have X or Y. Um, what? The, we, the places we go for the wrestling shoots, like oh. Sprint and T-Mobile, do not work there. Yeah, team. I used to have T-Mobile. That was bad. I have Sprint now, but mm-hmm. yeah, T-Mobile is bad anywhere outside of a city. Exactly. So I, I don't know <laughs> how much that would help if they merged up. It's like Sprint went after a bunch of business customers, and I heard they're really good along along all the highways, but not great anywhere else. And T-Mobile concentrated on the few miles within the center of a city and they're not good outside of cities. So mm-hmm. that's maybe what, that's what, what, what I don't understand and, and maybe I'm wrong. T-Mobile was always based on the GSM. Yes. Carrier network like AT&T is and Sprint was always based on the CDMA, CDMA network like Verizon is. So how those two are going to come together. Do you remember when, does, oh, it, does, it, it? does it matter now because of LTE, though? But are they sharing the same band? Yeah, that's I, the other I don't thing. know. Yeah, which could be like a, a software upgrade or, hey, we have access to all these towers. We'll just upgrade all of those towers, right, with both bands because it's theirs. Yeah. They, don't, they don't have to go through all the all the you know, rigmarole of, of getting permission. So why not? So, I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. I, how I'm this... interested to see how some of the – because I, I know – a lot of their customers rely on the lower end, lower cost devices. Maybe, and I don't, I don't know. Are they, are they, do they have all the bands and all the radios capability? I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not familiar enough with the. I remember when this happened. It didn't this happened with Cricket back in the day, where Cricket moved from I think GSM to CDMA, and all their customers had up to two years or something to get. So everyone had to get a new phone. Well, that's fine. A cricket phone costs twenty dollars. Uh, yeah, you know, you're talk- well, a T-Mobile still doesn't have iPhone, do they? Or, or yeah, they, everybody they does iPhone. now. They, okay. they everybody does now. Yeah, uh, it'll be interesting to see. Well, hey, I want to give a shout out to our friend uh, that's been supporting the show, and uh, and we want to make sure we support a pretty cool event ed- endeavor that he he's got going on. Usually, we're talking talking with you about uh, Alex Cars and the Alex Alex Cars Designs uh, out there in California, but he has another venture that we talk about a lot more over on Wrestling Mayhem Show called Occupy Pro Wrestling. And uh, they're looking to take a break. Uh, they're looking to break uh, sales records while supporting a great cause. A portion of proceeds this month will go to support Asperger's and Auti- the Asperger's and Autism Network. Uh, to get your merch and help support the cause, head over to whatamaneuver.net. If you're a wrestling fan, they got a lot of really cool stuff over there, uh, independent and, and, of course, just you know, kind of general wrestling. And, again, you know, a portion of those pre- proceeds will go to support the Asperger's and Autism Network, something that we definitely support here on the Sorgatron Media Network. So head over to whatamaneuver.net. Do I need to spell maneuver? Because it trips me up a little bit. Maneuver. Maneuver. It sounds like manure when you say it like don't, that. Don't, don't type that in. That's something else entirely. <laughs> uh, so let's not get it. So thanks, Alex Cars, for supporting the show. Please support it. I'm back and support a great cause with that as well um okay so uh <laughs> maneuver 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 uh chilla what, what else is awesome this week what else is awesome this week um one of the things i bumped into um was there and it actually when i looked at it i'm like why did someone make an amazon echo into like a travel coffee mug um because i saw the picture before i saw that what it, what it actually was someone has taken and made a portable battery base that the echo mm. actually kind of it looks like it goes down inside of this device and kind of locks in and then has a nice little nice little handle on the side thought it was a, a neat way i was actually i can't remember who i was talking to a week or so ago about different ways to get the echo device. Oh, we were oh, talking we, on the show. Yeah, we're we? talking about with Brian, weren't we? Cause yeah, was, we were talking was, about how you could plug the Amazon, the echo dot, like a lot of times it fits right in the cup holder and you can run just a USB power cable to it and then mm. share your, share your uh, phone's internet connection. Um, this device made by 97, it's called the sky. 
um, gets you about eight hours of battery life. So I thought that was pretty neat. And for for the larger, it's meant it's not for the dot. It's for the larger Gen Two Echo. Okay. I thought that was kind of a cool way to get your music like on your back porch or or somewhere else where you would want to carry that device around and, and maybe have it with with no electricity plugged into it so it would be cool if they had a uh like a waterproof version a fully enclosed version you could bring out by the pool mm-hmm. yeah that would be cool you yeah. could put this just get a big giant one gallon ziploc bag you could yeah you could do that just like the pittsburgh fly engineer phone uh yeah uh, no that's cool it's, it's about uh it's about 60 dollars, and they're actually discounting it by 10 dollars until they start shipping so mm-hmm. uh go check that out and you would find that over at this article was on it's on the, Cir- it's on the Verge Circuit Breaker uh, blog, yeah. but I don't see. I I love that they do it's, this. It's uh, ninety the like n i n e t y the number seven dot com. All right, I'll drop that in the chat room for you guys too, if I can get back to the. Chat I, can, I I can drop it in there. Oh right, yeah, drop it in there. See, so we have a direct link, uh, but that seems like a fun little device. So, um. <laughs> Nope, we're not going to talk about that one yet. Uh, mm. This is I, this is a less than awesome thing, but just since we talk about it so much here, we should bring this up. Uh, Movie Pass. There's a lot going on with Movie Pass lately. Not good. Not not great. <laughs> Their numbers are not good. They you cannot get the the uh, one a day subscription to it now. Now it's four movies a month. I think one so, one a week. Yeah. Which is still so are you grandfathered in? I must like- be. Do you, you have like the golden pass? Mm-hmm. I do. I do. Apparently, uh, got, as far as I can tell, I can still do a movie a day uh, regardless. Now, there are some restrictions that I'm seeing as a member. I received an email to let me know that I may be asked for a picture of my ticket stub to ensure that I'm actually seeing the movies that I'm checking in for and supposedly purchasing. OK, mm. Um, and also supposedly certain select movies, if you've already seen it once using movie pass, like hypothetically, I went to see Avengers and actually I paid for Avengers separately because I wanted to go opening night. But, uh, you know, if I go see Avengers and I go try to watch it again, I could be greeted with a, you can't check into that. You've already seen that movie message. They're not doing this on everything. Supposedly, maybe, probably high-end movies that people are seeing like say in Avengers are a Infinity lot of people War. seeing Avengers uh, do you think maybe a couple maybe a couple some of my Facebook friends have mentioned it have they yeah oh good there might be there might be a very specific Infinity War coping I hope it does uh, well. channel on Slack yeah I hope those kids do well I really want to encourage more comic book yes movies. yes really really supporting the underdog by the way if you're on audio Carmen is wearing a Deadpool uh, baseball jersey yeah <laughs> So, just to put some context out there. I didn't there. even realize we were across the street from a taco stand. Yeah, and there's definitely a taco there's on that a shirt. a taco on the shirt, yeah. 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 Now, you gotta, it'll be great that, now you have to go buy a taco wearing the taco shirt. I was actually going to get Mad Max tonight anyway. Yeah, I'm just going to go around to different taco places in Ooh, the city. Ooh, you're going to do the taco <laughs> tour. Wearing this shirt. <laughs> See if anyone notices. <laughs> they did notice the shirt, so they did not notice the shirt at an Alpha Lab I went to. No one noticed. Um and uh, it's great. I'm in a picture with some old school alpha levers, and you could see, you can clearly see Deadpool in the shot. Uh, but they d- they did notice the shirt at uh the comic book store. Go figure. Well, of course. Yeah. Yeah. At Fant- uh, Phantom of the Attic Games the other day. Was I? The, the Deadpool is so prominent. There was somebody I was working with over the weekend. They're wearing a Deadpool hat, and I was just like, "Yeah, of course." Uh, it, it's just it, it's it's pretty cool. Anyways, uh, movie pass. I'm gonna ride this thing into the ground. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> it, until it's not a thing anymore okay i mean i i went i went to uh maryland last week for uh for a baja event and i literally went to the theater four days in a row really <laughs> different theaters th- about three different theaters one here before i left and then uh when i was down there because there was nothing to do i didn't want to spend money i had this movie pass are you just Let's curious see. to see at what point they just stop uh, me too <laughs> I, I am i am but also i'm getting to that point where i'm running out of movies to watch that i right are, <laughs> like i got it got to the point where i went and saw amy schumer's i feel pretty by myself um I so didn't know, i didn't even know that was a thing that's a thing okay <laughs> And uh, yeah, yeah, it was interesting. Um, I even saw Super Troopers twice. 
but I had to go with my wife. And, I but it was that. but it was worth seeing again. Yeah. It was definitely something I would watch again because like the first one, I'm probably going to watch it. Like uh, well, sometimes when times. you watch Super Troopers, you don't remember a lot of it. That's true too. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, Carmen, tell me, uh, Google's going to let you register sites in the dot app. I know you didn't really want to talk about this. Ooh, I thought maybe or maybe maybe we shouldn't let everyone know about this, but I feel like you know. It's on, where is, uh, this is another Verge article. Yeah, they might, so they might have people probably know a, about this by couple, now. A couple of people read that, I think. But it's starting today. Mm-hmm. This is, this is uh, think, I think at noon today it started, and it goes until the 7th. Well, it you can, reg, the, the pre-registration goes until the 7th. Um, but uh, then it says, um, then... The general it will be open to the general public, but I don't. It's it's open to the general public now, so I'm not sure what that means. But basically, go to get dot app, g e t dot app, and um, just uh, search for a domain name, and then it will give you. Are you? Yeah, there you go, and uh, it will it will give you a list of registrars, so you don't have to register it through anyone in particular. Uh, I'm gonna check Bobby Cherry dot app because he recommended. I gotta point out, Hover is not a part of this. There's a lot in here: oh, Google okay. domains, GoDaddy, Name dot com, Hexonet. Like there's there's a bunch of them, but Hover dot com is not a part of that. I mean, it's that interesting is... that they didn't just try to get you to register through them. Actually, they're at the bottom. Yeah. Go- so Google released it. Google had owned the dot app top level domain, and they're the ones who released it. Uh, I think it's very interesting that they did not even put themselves at the top of the list. How much did you say this was? Well, I had clicked on GoDaddy before. Let me yeah. click on... The pre-order is saying uh, sixteen ninety nine for the first year, twenty three ninety nine normal. When I clicked on the Google domains for bobbycherry.app, it's from $12 a year, it says. Wow. wow. I'm, I, and, and I'm thinking you may have lost my video, unfortunately, and I can't seem to get it back, but... Huh. Um, the I'm wondering if this is because of Google's big push for um, progressive web apps. I wonder if they're expecting a lot of people to register these, like Twitter would get Twitter.app, and that would be a mm-hmm. direct link to their progressive web app. Microsoft's recently added there's the store, and there's a, there's a couple sites that I've found that actually have been ca- cataloging um, a bunch of progressive web apps, including like Flappy Bird clones and all kinds of stuff out there. So, um, uh, one one interesting note to this from this article on the Verge that you shared, Carmen. Um, this is the first top level domain to require HTTPS encryption. Most sites already use that. Uh, while it's not exactly new. It could help tackle the 32% of internet that's still not encrypted with HTTPS, according to numbers from Mozilla. And this is all from the Mozilla or the, the Verge article here. So, which makes sense at this point. Yeah, I think I, I think it's a good it's a good push for it, especially so. when you're Google. You're just like just let's just start from a clean slate. Everyone gets the exactly. S. I you know I I I love throwback video game stuff as much as the next guy. If you can't tell from, I don't know, looking around the studio. Your segues are confusing me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just moving on to the next thing. Uh, but Atari, the Atari VCS pre-orders are starting on May 30th, but it won't ship until 2019. And also, we don't have an announced game for this thing. Um, they do have a version that's the, you know, wood brushed, um, nice old school version here. Um, we do know that it's running some, I don't know, pretty decent hardware, I guess. Where it's going to support 4K re- resolutions, uh, HDR, uh, uh, AMD uh, processors in here, but uh, that's that's all we know. So if you want to pre-order this thing, um, oh oh, it is going to come preloaded with a Z- Atari Vault, which is going to be a hundred plus game collection of classic Atari games, which you can play your Asteroids in 4K now, guys. <laughs> Those lines are going to be ultra crisp. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. I was just playing uh, Streets of Rage Collection was uh, just uh, made available on uh, Games for Gold on Xbox. And like it gives you the, the option of scaling it up on your HD television. But do you want to? I don't want to. No, I don't think you want to. That did not hold up. There's a lot of complicated <laughs> pixels that do not age well. Do, do they have a list of all of the games? Because I'm really hoping ET is on here. Oh, it usually isn't, um, because that I mean that is technically a license. We're digging that up. 
Let's see. <laughs> Atari Vault games. Because I think Atari Vault is a is a selection that is uh, has been released on multiple consoles at this point. Oh, it's actually... A, how, how is Atari Vault made in Unity? Uh, Unity is something like an Unreal Engine um, for it. Because you know, I think they, they probably do like a 3D arcade uh, kind of situation. I have a list here on Wikipedia, uh, Chilla, and I do not see E.T. I'm sorry. But man, you can get Combat and Combat 2, Double Dunk. <laughs> is Adventure on here? It has to be. There you go. Then you guys can... Pitfall? Is Pitfall on there? No, I, yeah, Adventure is on here. Uh, Pitfall... No, because um, Pitfall is an Activision title. Activision game. So that's the other thing. If it was like an Intellivision Activision game, you're probably not going to see it on these collections. So, so I'm not getting the Smurfs. <laughs> no, you're not getting... The Smurfs? Wow. Uh, no, no, no. When they... Actually, I feel like they, the, that has been released several times. Um this actually is including Atari 2600 and arcade versions of select titles. So Cloak and Dagger. Cloak and Dagger's on here. Nice. As the game was based on, right? Or yeah, the, I don't the, know. The, I, movie, I the movie yeah, was based on. Yeah, is it on there? I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, I do not see it. Because they, cause they did the... I think they did this, the upright arcade version of that. Mm, so... Um, no, pretty cool thing going on with there. Um, again, kind of bo- rebooting our childhood yet once again. Hey, guys, I want to give a shout-out to our friends at Millvale Music Festival. It's coming up, guys. It's only a couple of weeks away. It takes over a Millvale here on May 12th. Uh, we have a great conversation about the art alley with Mike Zikafus out there. And also check out the um, Sidekick Media stage, as well as several great, great stages going on there. And... Did we announce that one thing, that one person that's going to be on that one stage that we know? Is that public about so-and-so on the stage? Yeah, the entire that, That's out there? Okay. Um, friend of the show, member of the show, Dutters is actually going to be hosting a stage. Do we know which stage she's going to be on yet? She's going to be at the library? There's a stage at the library. What kind of music is at the library? Is that where, music. Is that where, <laughs> is that where Struggle Bus is playing? <laughs> Damn it. At a reasonable volume. At a reasonable volume, yes. Um, and actually, we're going to have Max out. That's going to be a part of this over on Wrestling Mayhem show here tonight. Uh, as a, uh, Just after this recording, I guess. So check them out. MillvaleMusic.org. A lot of cool and fun stuff going on over there. And uh, go check it out. Oh, is this video? Oh, and our promo video is up. Um, we, uh, we, we sent... One of our guys, I think Chad the Shad, was uh, behind the camera last year uh, giving you some sights and sounds from uh, the Millville Music Festival again. That way they say they effectively doubled the population of Millville, Pennsylvania. And uh, it's a pretty pretty cool pretty cool thing they got going on there. So go check it out, millvillemusic.org, for more information. I was uh, recently at a show in Millville at, uh, as you can guess, at Mr. Smalls. Do you want to guess who it was? Never going to give you one. I can Never send you a link. Away. Yeah. Rick Astley. Man, I think I've seen three shows of Mr. Smalls this year so far, but Rick Astley. Wow, top. look at you. He is an excellent performer. Yeah. He actually puts on a really good show. And that's my good news. I have some bad news. Hmm. I just tried to register an app, an app domain. And uh, so now I know what pre-registration means. Okay. Pre-registration costs $999. Whoa! Uh, or you can get priority pre-registration. There are several options up to $13,499 and 99 cents. And, uh, that's everybody that wants to get their thing in now before it's open to the public. Right. It opens to the public on Tuesday, May 8th. That's when it's going to be $12 through Google domains. That's probably probably when it's going to be and everything's going to be taken. I tried to get, I don't want to say what I tried to get because then maybe I can get it in (laughs) BobbyCherry.app. Nope. It was better than that, <laughs> believe it or not, <laughs> and much shorter. <laughs> hmm. Oh, but somebody, please get in a week from now. Get Bobby Cherry because I'm not spending money on that guy. But <laughs> what's it gonna be? Just a picture someone of someone else. Yeah, you know, it just needs to be an app that says, "Is Bobby Cherry at Kennywood?" Yes or no. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, it's like Rob Bobby Cherry's house dot app. <laughs> Oh, so much fun. Hey, guys, uh, we got a lot of fun coming up here in the next several weeks. Cynthia Klosky is going to be joining us here on the show next week. And uh, Kenny Chen from Ascender is actually going to be joining us here 
on the uh, 22nd. And of course, like I said, we're gearing up for the, I guess, eight year anniversary uh, episode 400. I like how that lined up there. Um, it's going to be two days removed. Like it's going to be eight years on the third of June. Act like you planned it. It's exactly how we work this yeah. out. <laughs> hey, if, if you started, if you started playing every episode right now, back to back, could you make it through all of them by the time we got there? Well, it's going to be at least 395 hours. Somebody do the math on that. Divide by 24. Hey Siri, what is 395 divided by? Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Nope. Okay. Uh, no, no, that's not three ninety-five divided by twenty-four. There we go. Well, take you sixteen days. Sixteen and a half. Oh, days. you can make it. That's not bad. That's not bad. Just, just. There's. You, know. you should. You should do the countdown on Twitch. Ooh. Then I have to upload them all to Twitch. <laughs> that's. That's. Uh, we're not. We're not ready for that yet, Chilla. Come, come on. What do you think we are, Mister Rogers? Happy little trees. Come on. That's not the same person. No, I'm, but that's the two things they've oh, been doing okay. on there. So, yes. John Carmen. Wait, that's what they do on Twitch? What? I thought it was me playing video games badly. No, it's a bunch of stuff. Pro wow. Wrestling's on there. They they play uh, marathons of uh, recently Mr. Rogers. They they did a marathon of uh Is Mr. Uh, Rogers Bob not Ross. available elsewhere? I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I honestly don't know. But um, they do this thing where on Twitch where they have non-gaming things. Like, we're showing these shows on there now. Well, I know my cousin it. has used it to stream her son's robot contests. Mm-hmm. I don't know what they do in school now. They they build robots. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they build robots. So, so she, like Robot she, Fight Club? You basically, I think, yeah. Robot Wars. Yep. And, and she's been watching his remote, like, Robot Wars you know, on Twitch, so they use it for that in schools. So, yeah, it, it's educational. There's a whole talk shows section here that we're uh, uh, apparently Ooh, we're, we're really trying to get in on. There's a bear. Yeah, keep going. There you oh, go. there is a bear. Yeah, Star Citizen AR Cast, a very troublesome podcast. Huh. So that's a thing. Uh, so have fun with that one, guys. Uh, <laughs> but no, but again, please follow the Sorgatron Media Twitch page. Uh, Carmen, where can people find you online that you would like them to? Probably still going with the Twitter. Okay. I've actually been using Twitter recently. Carmen Avenue? Yeah. Yeah, I hadn't really used really used Twitter except for fake Google searches for a couple of years. But uh, I'm starting to... I, maybe, maybe Facebook's getting boring. Mm-hmm. A lot of people have left Facebook, so I'm, uh, there's a lot of stuff on Twitter. Really, now. you're yeah. seeing an exodus? Seems like it. Yeah. Seems I like saw, I'm seeing the I, same I've people. I've only like noticed one person that I know leave. Not Facebook. leave, but just not posting as much. I'm I'm, I'm seeing uh, the same people over and over again. You know, mm-hmm. um, but then I hop back on Twitter. I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm following a lot of people, and I'm gonna unfollow some of them. Uh, but I, but man, the conversation goes fast on Twitter. You can hop into anything there. Yeah, and it's no. I'm no longer worried about like multiple tweets because you know I have that like five minutes where I just dive into Twitter every mm-hmm. night and just like okay, 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 you know, and and then that's it. Yeah. So you know, well, in the meantime, there's there's pro wrestling on Twitch over at the Indie Wrestling US one going on right now. <laughs> so a little is bit of live? everything. Uh, no, this is some of the shows that we recorded uh, here in the area a couple months ago. So this is our friends at Rise Wrestling down in Connellsville, actually. So this is the kind of thing we're doing it for, just kind of getting that content out there so they see it, and hopefully they go back over to IndieWrestling.us and they buy some stuff. So, you know, I mean, it, it's a part of a thing, and it, and there's a lot of people there. I feel like this is the replacement for doing things on YouTube, honestly. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Thank you, John Chichilla, ChillaTech.net. Chilla Tech Monday. You can find me uh, Chill on the Twitter, John Chill on the Facebooks. That's right. And, I, and I'm also a, a happy little cloud. Happy a little iCloud right now. I keep going for <laughs> there's a little ha- iCloud login over there. <laughs> need to fix that. I need to remember what my new password is. Um, but <laughs> thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Please check out everything at awesomecast.com and join us live at 7 p.m. Eastern time on our Facebook page. Thank you, everybody, that's been dropping in through the night. I know Uncle Crappy was in there, uh, as well as uh, 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 Crazy Krause and a few others popping in there throughout the evening. We'll see you guys next time. Uh, you've been an awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.